What's going on guys? Multiverse Corrupt here with yet another action figure review video and today we're having a look at the Alpha Predator from NECA Toys. Of course, as always guys, starting off this video, we are taking a look at the Alpha Predator NECA box. And I do think that this box is a presentation within itself, being that it has this beautiful concept art of the Alpha Predator standing front and center, ready to do battle, or having just won a battle. Up here at the top, you can see it's the special edition 100th Predator figure, and down here, Predator and Alpha Predator. Flipping over here to the side, guys, it does say Predator, Alpha Predator, and then Special Edition, 100th figure again. And then flipping over here to the back, guys, are these beautiful images of the figure itself in some dynamic poses, ready to do battle, wielding his spear, and unmasked and masked. I do think that this is going to be a fantastic figure. Flipping it over here to the side, just as the same thing that it says on the other side with Predator and Alpha Predator there. And then on the front of the box is a little front door, a little open face window that you can see. Hitting behind that is this victory pose, probably the predator just letting out a victory roar, letting his people know that they are free. With all that said though guys, let's go ahead and get the alpha predator out of this packaging and see how he looks. The Ayucha race began thousands of years ago as the Haish Kwaiten, a primitive species suddenly struggling under the rule of alien invaders. For many centuries, the Amingi were cruel rulers, using the Haish for labor and breeding them to battle for the entertainment of their masters. But ultimately, the Amingi engineered their own defeat when they produced fighters strong enough to organize a rebellion, led by one particularly powerful Haish who came to be known in legend as the first hunter, the Alpha Predator. So right here, guys, is the Alpha Predator straight out of the package, and I think he looks absolutely phenomenal. I think that NECA Toys did a really cool concept with this figure, being that it is a figure that they created on their own, and going into depth of giving him his own backstory. He's not just any Predator, he is the Ayucha that freed his species from slavery, from the Amingi, and the Amingi is what he is wearing all over him as his armor. He took them out and made a suit of armor, the Predator armor that we know and love, but it is obviously the very first. So it is not technological. It's not as advanced as we see later on in life with the movies. This is thousands and thousands of years ago from when he killed it, this monster of a beast, and wore its exoskeleton. Now, I will say it looks like it's a mashup of other Amingi species as well, from large to small when it comes to the size of certain body parts that he is wearing throughout his entire body. With all that said, though, guys, let's go ahead and take the Alpha Predator off of the rotating turntable and see the accessories that he comes with. And right here, guys, in terms of accessories, this Predator does come with a little bit, quite a bit, actually. Um, as you probably noticed, there's a picture on my screen now of an accessory that I am missing. Quick story, I had it, I dropped the figure, couldn't find it, and it fell on a stack of papers. I picked up that stack of papers and used it for a fire that we had in my lawn. So the shuriken is not inside this video, unfortunately. But with that said... Let's go ahead and jump into the accessories that we do still have, starting with the Predator's Spear. And this spear is also made out of Amingi body parts. And like I said, it looks like that it is made from different sizes of the species from maybe they have animal type species in the Amingi. Maybe they have, you know, giant beasts of the Amingi because I'm pretty sure that this right here is supposed to be like a jaw bone or maybe even at first glance it looks like some sort of pincher that he put together. But I'm pretty sure that this is supposed to be like jaw bones that he has as the edge for the tip of his spear. And then going down to the handle of the spear, you can see that it is just the bones connected and conjoined. And me personally, I don't see how that's going to be sturdy. I mean bones aren't really meant to just click together like that without you know supporting ligaments so unless he found some super sticky tar on the planet he's from of yuja prime i don't see how this is going to help him 
in the long run in forms of combat. Maybe it's just a walking stick. Maybe he's just showcasing. Who knows? And down here, of course, is just another point, another sharp area that he can use as a weapon. And I'm pretty sure that this is supposed to be a spike that protrudes from one of the Amingi species that he has tied off. And this one actually looks like it's tied on very well. But going back up to right here, it's literally just connected. Like, I don't see how that's going to hold when you're swinging it in combat. Moving on, though, guys, let's go ahead and get his little hook blade out here, which, of course, is another, looks like another bone-type blade. So this one right here does look like it's put together by him a lot better in terms of it drifts down. Maybe this whole thing is just a piece of bone that he has sharpened and then just put a wrap on there for his grip. But I do love the detail that they put into these accessories, especially this hook blade, because all of these little riblets in here, you can feel every single one of them. So respect to NECA toys on that front. Jumping over to my personal favorite, I love it when NECA gives us the mask that we can just place on and off of his face without giving us a separate head sculpt. Now, would I have liked a separate head sculpt with his mandibles on his face open, doing kind of like a scream into the night sky? Absolutely. But I will say I really do love this mask. I do have a little bit of a paint scratch right here. It came out of the package like that, so hopefully you'll get a pristine eye like I have over here on this side. But it doesn't bother me too much. I really do love that this is the helmet that they gave him. And a little fun fact for you there, this right here was the original design for the Predator in the first movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. This was what the Predator was supposed to look like. Not his armor, but the species themselves, the actual Aucha race, before they went and reworked it and gave us the Predator face that we all know and love to this day. And of course, going up here, guys, he does come with interchangeable hands. He does come with these two open palm hands. He has two grabbing hands, and then he has two fists. So, guys, let's go ahead and get the accessories out of the way and get the Alpha Predator back out here to check out that detail. So, right here, guys, in terms of detail, starting off with the head. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. The head sculpt is really what we come to see when it comes to a Predator figure. You have the mandibles here. now, But I will say that this head is still fantastic nonetheless. Going ahead and looking right here, if you tilt him up some, you can see that he has those red bloodshot eyes. And I think that it is absolutely fantastic for them to actually take the time and paint in his eyes. Even though they are so sunken into his head like even going like this you can barely see them he just looks absolutely menacing i do love that this one has the white pale skin on him due to the fact that his people were locked in cages and put underground or inside caves and mountains and stuff like that to where the pigment changed over time because he was not one of the first members to be enslaved he of course was born and came later on, probably a thousand years later in life, and the Amingi thought, this is a monster of a beast, let's get him in those fights, which trained him to be the warrior that he became. Flipping over to the back, let's go ahead and take a second to admire these Predator Dreadlocks that is so iconic with this character. And these little points right here on the back, these little spikes, they do come off and do act as an extension to his little wrist blade that is down here. There is a little peg there that they plug into, but I'm not really going to get into that. I'm probably not even going to showcase that on account that my wrist blades like to fall off. They're just a little fragile, being that these characters are in my garage, and it gets a little warm out here sometimes. So the plastic is constantly a little soft, but it helps out in the long run for these videos when I need to do head swaps and so on and so forth. They're already a soft plastic at that point. But moving down here to the body, I really do love the exoskeleton that they have put on the Predator figure here. That he has killed this Amingi, gutted it, ripped off its exoskeleton, and is now wearing it for his own use. But going all the way down here to his little crotch area here he does have kind of a loincloth it's more like the hide of the creatures even though i'm a little confused when you see the original design unless you know it's unfinished you don't really see a lot of hair when it comes to that so it's probably a different species that he used for the hide but 
you just don't see that on the original design for the Amingis. You don't see that at all. You don't see any hair on their body. They're just these ant-like beings that are walking on two legs. Going over here to the skull, though, this skull I think is absolutely fantastic. And I do love the idea of this one being his, his wrist blades, but that simply is not the case. If you were to take this hand off, flip this around, there is a peg hole up top that this little spike actually sticks into. This peg hole here, which gives him the extended wrist blade. I think it's cooler if these fangs are what is used for his wrist blades. Moving all the way down here to his legs, you can tell that his legs are completely covered, except for, of course, the inner thigh. But everything else on the outside, down to the calf, to the top of his feet, to his thighs, they are completely covered in this exoskeleton-type shell. This entire suit of armor is what we are used to seeing, but we see it now in a different perspective, what it looked like a thousand years ago and where the predator species of the Iucha got the idea to be completely covered and it was from the dead carcass of their captures. I think that that is absolutely awesome. With all that said though guys, let's go ahead and get away from the detail and move into the size and articulation of this figure. Now guys, when it comes to how tall this figure stands, he does indeed stand at about the 9 inches mark to the top of his ponytail on the back, and I am okay with that. I do think that when it comes to the Ayucha race, when it comes to the Predator, he should be taller than an average human being in terms of articulation. Let's actually go ahead and move into this review for the articulation. For the articulation, guys, let's go ahead and get him off of the stand as well. His head is on a ball joint. It's actually not a ball joint. We'll go ahead and take this off since I have his hair tucked in. Let's go ahead and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. It's actually on a peg and it holds actually quite nicely right inside there. It's actually not going nowhere. But his head is on this little peg. We'll leave his hair floating in the wind for the rest of this review. In terms of his arms and shoulder articulation, his arms do go up, but they don't go up very far considering that he does have this thick plastic for this thick armor on his arms. But they go up to about that far. No bicep swivel, but they did give us double hinged elbows that he can articulate up with ease. And his elbows also have their own little swivel in them as well. As for his hands, his hands are on that classic wrist hinge and peg. And you can obviously swap out the hands like I showed you for the accessories. As for his ab crunch, his ab crunch is actually fairly well for a NECA figure. He can actually tilt forward and he can indeed tilt back. But you get more forward than back in this case since he does have a little spine protector back here that gets in the way but he can also swivel on his ab crunch as well. As for his waist, his waist also has a swivel within it, and his legs kick out about that far, being that the loin cloth is thick and in the way, and his legs do spread apart, but they only spread apart so far, being that the armor does get in the way still. For his knees, he does have double jointed knees, and as for his ankle articulation, his ankle articulates down, but it barely articulates up, being that he does have a bit of hide on his the top of his foot as well. No toe articulation and no ankle pivot. And when it comes to this size comparison, guys, this is the Alpha Predator from NECA Toys standing next to Diamond Select Spider-Man from Homecoming. And I think to be 7 inches tall and supposed to be a 14, 15 year old kid, I feel like this works perfectly compared to the Alpha Predator. Right here, guys, we have McFarlane Toys Batman Year 2 scaled up next to the Alpha Predator, and I think that this one works as well. Gonna be some great photos of these two going at it just to see another version of Batman versus the Predator. And of course, guys, here is the Xenomorph from NECA Toys standing next to the Alpha Predator, and these two, hands down, work together perfectly. Alrighty guys, and there you have it, another action figure review video in the books on my channel for you guys to enjoy. As for my rating on this figure guys, I'm going to have to give the Predator a solid 10 out of 10. I think that this figure is absolutely phenomenal and NECA Toys went that extra step to give us that backstory 
and the poster that shows us every figure that they have made up until this point of number 100. With all that said though guys, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave me a comment down in the comment section below. I really do love interacting with you guys. So until the next time guys, I will see you in the next video. Later.